we'll see. We live. Every week, it's always the same thing. We live, we live, we live. <laughs> we're live. All right. I think we're live, everybody. How are you guys doing? Uh, another week in paradise. Another Sunday in cereals. That's right. <laughs> I remember. I have some people in chat. Raven Shadows out there. It's me, dude. What's up, brother? Sub Vapes. Uh, Buick's Jane out Rivera. there. Uh, das Moose is in the chat. Lori, uh, Vape and Buckeye. What is going on, everybody? Hope everyone's having an awesome Sunday. Or for some of you guys that are way over that side of the world, it's already Monday morning and you're starting your day with us. And I appreciate that. Alfredo, how's it going, brother? It's going. So yeah. it's a Sunday cereal day, huh? Yeah, we're going to be, we're going to, we're going to be the cereal killer, the cereal savior today. We'll see how all that goes. <laughs> uh, Mary Beth may pop in at some point. We'll do storms up in, in New Jersey. She got she, everything went well all week. And then all of a sudden, last night, she loses power. So if she can get a connection and get a chance to pop on, she will. If not, we'll have to uh, steer this ship uh, without the uh, first mate this week. But. Hopefully, uh, she gets everything all worked out. Alan Gorby's out there. What's going on, brother? So, Das Moose is in the house. How are we doing, everybody? Good. What are you up to today? Not much. Usually, uh, mixing as always. Usually try to tackle one or two things a day and... Decided I'd save a few tweaks on some of my cereal vapes for the show, so awesome, we're gonna awesome. we're gonna mess around with the Lucky Charms, try to get it more authentic, and I also have a chocolate granola bar, like a chewy one, the cheapest one you can find in the grocery store. Hey, nothing wrong with that. We like cheap around here. We're a low budget program. That's right. Uh, Nikki's out there. Pippa's out there. Taking a group. Smith's out there. Mr. Dirty Deeds is out there. On dirt cheap. Yes, said Ellen Corby. Now, is that the recipe you put in a uh, chat? Is that the uh, Lucky Charms one that you're going to be working on today? No, that's my already finished Fruit Loops and oh, milk. Okay. And it is quite awesome. Cool. Yeah, as everyone can see by the background, I'm working with one on one today. Uh, have their speckled flakes. I think you have the speckled flake cereal, which is, if, you, if you're not familiar with it, it is a. Let's see, if get that right. There we go. Kind of focus there a little bit. Uh, it's a, it's basically like a, a frosted flakes. You know, like Tony the Tiger type. It's used around three, anywhere from three to five percent in, in a mix, and it's it's there. You get that milky undertone. So it's a you know it's a frosted flake with milk. I mean, it's have a few yeah. other. Uh, few other ingredients uh that's thrown in there we'll, we'll talk about that when we start mixing but that's basically what it you know what it comes down to and 101 they just had another flash sale oh mary beth has made it yes we are not worthy <laughs> mary <laughs> comes, in with, comes in with awesome. a bull, bull vape too Hell yeah. Keeping out of the nose. Mean can you hear me business. yes yeah good come ah. on loud and clear Woo now we're more complete. <laughs> so, did you get, so did you get a room at the Ritz Carlton or? Oh, don't I wish, baby. Yeah, yeah. man. Let me Ritz, tell you. Ready, man. Half of New Times Square. Half of Jersey is trying to find a hotel room, man. Like oh, the northern half of Jersey. I, I called five hotels. They were all booked. And I got this for one night. You know, I'm, I'm praying that either my power comes back or someone else cancels because they get their power and I can do a little hotel hopping. But man, they got you by the... You know the shorts. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, Pippa no. was missing you. She was just like, "Oh, wait a minute. Where's all the white women at?" <laughs> <laughs> Who no, said no. that? Alfred? Pippa. Alfreda? Who? No, Pippa, Pippa said that. Yeah. I Who do have that? some uncharted territory for the show that I forgot about and picked up this. Oh, the Captain and Berries. Yeah, I yeah. do have that, but I've never opened it. Yeah, we'll we'll find out if it's a uh, horrible mistake. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that's gonna be like a crunch bear. If it's just gonna be just the bear. Who, who is it by? It's one a, is it by? It's one on one. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping it's just the 
all berries, crunch berries, like none of none of the none yeah, of the like, yellow like corn lucky, syrup. yeah, like lucky leprechauns, all the marshmallows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if you can see chat, Mara. Nikki was asking what happened with the power. I'll just tell her from the storms. Yeah, you know what? We had power. It was amazing. Like never in my my 20 years of living in this part of of Hopakong in New Jersey mm -hmm. have we not lost power during. Like we've always lost power. And so everyone around us had lost power. You know, the text messages, the Facebook posts. I'm like, man, I don't know what happened this time, but God must have had mercy on our soul. Yeah. And so we made it all the way through Saturday. I had no internet, but like, you know, I could wing and finagle my way. Yeah. So then, then one o'clock, I heard a beep. 1 a.m. I'm oh, like, geez. mother, son of a, you can't, no, no, no. Sure enough, no power. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, so hopefully... Hopefully we have it back by Wednesday. Yeah. I see Mitch Green out there. Hopefully you're feeling better, Mitch. He was under the weather, had to uh, go hang out in the hospital for a little bit the other day. Oh, no. That's bad. Yeah, he was having some uh, white blood cell stuff was elevated. Platelets were all screwed up. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you're feeling better, buddy. Country living's out there. What's up, Larry? Big country. All right. Yeah, so I mean that's, I mean that's something else. And you, you know, had good, you know, you're going through that. I mean, yeah, it, you know, when you live in this neck of the woods, it, it, you need a, you need a, um, a generator. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just like they should. It's just the way it is. But I'm, you know, I'm like, I don't want to pay ten thousand dollars for something I'm only going to use twice a year, and blah blah blah. And every year, it's like we have these periods where it's like four or five days we lose power. So whatever. You know, I mean, it's anyway, crazy yeah. that like it's you know it's taking that long. I mean, to get it. Here to yeah, get you it. know what the problem is? You have so many spotty outages that are due to trees. That's the problem with northern New Jersey. Yeah, and everything's above ground. Nothing's underneath. Yeah. So the infrastructure is so badly designed for this part of the woods that you it just it, the man hours and the time you have to get the clear the trees cleared. Then you can get the workers in to do the lines, and it's just, it's a mess. Anyway, let's talk vape, man. I've been dealing with this all yeah, bloody exactly. Today. <laughs> yeah, I, let's I, talk I, holy hot I, just, I, look, I looked over, I was like, oh, wow. I bent over a little bit, and it's like a hot spot, and like <laughs> with the green screen I got going on, just playing with it. Woo, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I grew up somewhere where if you lost power for more than four days, you were riding a bike the town 15 miles but <laughs> <laughs> i did 15 miles on my bike and but, it was a flat tire but i yeah. did it yep. <laughs> and, no would, shoes, uh, and you had the metal spikes on your on your pedals yeah you would you would sure <laughs> enough find the seven trees along the way that were the cause of you not having power yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> like, exactly well, <laughs> yep well there you go that's the answer so, um, so I don't know. Um, I'm sorry because I was a little late. Um, Dasmus, did we get to hear your kind of story? What you're about? What you what you dealio? I'm. Uh, we were about to. We we're about to. Sorry. Do most things All for right. money. Until I was, I so rudely plunged in. No, you're good. Please resume. Thank you. Well, hi, my name is Moose, and I do <laughs> things for money. Move stuff for money, whatever the sign says. <laughs> but uh, before a, before a mixer, I'm a musician and a fire performer and a landscaper. So when I'm not doing this stuff, that's that's what I'm doing: is playing with fire or making music, making the music to play with fire. <laughs> so all of that stuff. Um, but got into vaping just like uh, pretty much everyone else. Um, wanted to quit the quit the smokies and the stinkies, and I knew vaping was working when I was uh, down in like a sewer, and uh, this lady walked by smoking a cigarette, and it smelled worse than what was down in the sewer that I was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a great I story. <laughs> I was hooked. Um, and the other funny thing to me about it is I I hate fruits, absolutely cannot eat blueberries, strawberries. 
Like you name it, I, I probably do not like it at all, but I'll vape them all day. Like blueberry oh, yogurt. Is, yeah, my, blueberry yogurt's like my favorite thing. So it's kind of it's kind of ass backwards, but all these fruits that I've you know don't like or n- never wanted to try because I just knew I wouldn't like them. I get to kind of try them now, I guess, in chemical form. <laughs> yeah, like like guanabana, guana, guanabana. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you know, I was, I was vaping for a while and then uh, I, just like anything, you know, if I can figure out how to do it myself, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I, I was, of course, stumbling across profiles that I, I really liked. And I was like, well, this is like, this is the more interesting side to vaping to me is like, the, you know, the, mo- the mods and the building and the, the batteries and, you know, that's cool. But at the end of the day, it's the juice. Like, it, it, it's, it's what's bringing you back to that device every day and every time you know especially for for smokers and stuff like that's something i can uh definitely suggest is is find that one flavor that makes you go to your vape instead of your cigarette because that's what's going to get you off of it um you're going to crave that more than the other stuff so um but so um a friend of mine uh he had a few friends that wanted to start selling juice, but didn't know anything about it. You know, they hmm. just kind of want to jump into it. Um, and I didn't really know, <laughs> I, I didn't really know them too well, but they knew that we were getting into mixing. So they kind of like hired us to make up a bunch of recipes that they could sell. And that's what they did. So my commercial side of mixing stems from that. Um, and it was, you know, nothing really to cry home to. Uh, the contracts are almost up, so I get to post those recipes soon, which is kind of nice. But they're all very simple, you know, commercial stuff. Like it's like, you know, yeah, two, two, like, yeah, two to two to three or four flavors. Ingredients. Ramped yep. up, yeah, and you get what you get. <laughs> very <laughs> linear, course, yeah. strong flavor, yeah, not complex, super, yeah, not layered. You could want. <laughs> Um, (laughs) and and more succulous for you yeah Yeah. (laughs) and then another friend of mine he was uh he was still smoking cigarettes and i introduced him to vaping and (laughs) it's the it's the craziest story but he he won a scratch off like the 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 double word scratch off tickets or whatever Uh that you can Mm -hmm. win like six hundred thousand dollars or three hundred whatever it is yeah he won whoa. Them. oh wow. whoa so he came to me and he was like hey you want to you want to start really mixing and you want you want to open a vape shop and i was like no i don't want to do that yeah yeah of course i do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's do this um so we were doing that for a while i i pointed him in the right direction of what i knew at the time like you know like two years ago of the websites of where to get your mechanical stuff from where to get your wholesale juice from and all that stuff. And, you know, just, we paid attention to, you know, what was popular at the time. And then for mixing, you know, we, we definitely had a a long, slow road with it. Uh, We started with just TPA and flavor art and you can make a lot of great mixes with those, but they can be <laughs> very unforgiving when you run into a lot of flavors that just don't do what they say they are, or you just, you know, yeah. you're very early yep. in mixing and you yep. just don't know what they do yet. <laughs> um, There's not a wide, they're not a, like at least FA, FA is not a very wide, you know, percentage. Like you don't have yeah. a lot of wide margin for error and you have very narrow and they're not usually going to carry a lot of the base of your flavors. So, right. Yeah. There, there's, there's a lot of things that I mix with TPA or flavor art now that I'm like, man, if I had this Capella or this Flavor West or this Flavora thing like two years ago, that recipe would have been banging. <laughs> but, you know, we didn't, yeah, we, didn't have, right. we didn't have the knowledge and the know-how, you know, back then as much. We didn't, you know, and I was also, yeah. we were also staying in the shadows. We didn't... Um, we didn't want like outside influence on our mixing. You know what I'm saying? Like we wanted to kind of mm-hmm. 
dive into it as free as possible. Um, so we came up with a couple recipes, a tobacco, a like two or three candy ones. There's a really good, uh, what is it? It's like a lime raspberry sour gummy worm that he makes. Mm. So. Ooh, that sounds really good actually. Yeah, but, and they're all very simple recipes and stuff, which is nice. Um, but yeah, just a lot of yeah, little absolutely. simple things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cool. So how, <laughs> so how long have you been actually making recipes for like three, three years, it sounds like? Going on four now. Yeah. yeah going yeah. on to about four years now. Um, and then, you know, we were doing that for a little while and everything changed. <laughs> we got the big FDA mm. regulation scare and stuff like that. And he, and I don't blame him for doing it. Um, like he was like, you know, to save the shop and to not run into anything, let's stop selling in-house juice. And I was like, that's cool, man. Like, you know, if everything does change and stuff, we still have the clientele. And I, I do have a few people that loved our juice so much that they just kind of hit us up for them. And, you know, that's the way it is. <laughs> so, yeah. And then after that, after, you know, the big change happened, I kind of stepped out of the shadows. Um, I was getting more active into vaping forums and ELR and ATF and on YouTube channels and stuff. And it was like, it was pretty reassuring to know that like what other people were doing with mixing wasn't too far off from what I was doing. Um, it was nice to be able to have other people to help. Um, Cause like when I first started, there was definitely no one there to tell me, Hey, you go to bull city flavors and you can get all this good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yep, and, then, and there's ELR, and they can do the calculations for you. Right, and yeah. All the flavor profiles and benefits. Yeah. Yep. And, um, yep, totally. And then I also I also noticed that, the, which there was a huge lack of this in a lot of vape shops, was like the activism towards vaping and, you know, protecting oh, absolutely. What, we all, what we all love so dearly. Uh, and I found, I found more activism uh, in the uh, vape Absolutely. Community. Or the mixing community, um, yep. than anywhere else. So, yep, that really drew me towards it, and completely here we agree. Are now. <laughs> right on. Here we are talking cereals, baby. Yep, and cere All cereals right. happen to so, be one of my main squeezes too. So that's good. <laughs> I remember They're waking jam. up. Sunday They're morning, your jam. Waking up Sunday morning, getting my bowl of cereal, and just watching TV, eating my bowl of cereal in the morning. Oh yeah, Saturday morning cartoons with yeah. that bowl of Lucky Charms or every kid. Come yeah. on, <laughs> every kid in America, every kid in America, you know, has done that. Every kid. It's, so it's nice um, to get that sweet tooth in and stuff because if you're someone like me <laughs> that will totally eat way too much cereal than they're supposed to, <laughs> cereal me vapes too. will help you. <laughs> yeah, but, but according to the government, you know, we're adults. We don't like cereal. Right. No. Of course. Yeah. No. Kitty stuff. Exactly. You know. So, um, when we're talking about cereal, kind of the way I kind of think about cereal, so I'm kind of interested how you think about it, is you kind of have like the rice crispy kind of base cereals. You have kind of the flake honey stuff cereal <laughs> stuff. And then you have kind of the fruity pebbly, fruity circles, fruitios. So you kind of have like those three kind of broad categories, right? And then you have kind of like the category where you take different grainy and different notes and kind of create your own. So where do you kind of fall into that genre? Um, or do you I, like them all? I do like you, them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like they all they all play a part and there's also like there's also like a lot of grains in certain flavorings that you wouldn't yep. think could play a part yep. in a cereal. Yeah. Um, everybody knows like like TPA cheesecake graham crust is one of those things right. that just yep. like it might not scream like authentic cereal, but if you wanted to get by or kind of boost some of the grainy notes in, in a mix. That'll, Absolutely. That'll do it. F.A. Caramel even has like that sugary, grainy kind of caramelized brown sugar note that can kind of help a little bit too, which is kind of an off thing. 
Yep. A so, lot of a lot of cereals have uh, caramel coloring in them. Like while while you're making a mm -hmm. a recipe, you don't always need to go like you know one to one with the ingredients that you're putting in the recipe to what it's how it's actually made. But it is nice to see like how close you can actually get with those flavorings. You know, like some yep. things, some, some cereals contain like a coconut oil, like a uh, Captain Crunch. One of the reasons it's so crunchy and stays crunchy is because of the butter and the coconut that they add to it. Yep. I, I believe. Yep. At least, so. I, I think so too. I agree with you. Um, a lot of things have coconut in it that you don't suspect when you start looking at actual natural ingredients and you break it down, you're like, Hmm, yep. looky there. Looky you know, there. It, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't too long ago that it was a, it was a shocker to everyone that Fruit Loops was, was all one flavor and they're all just different colors. They're not. And it's all basically lemon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, so it's a, it says it in the ingredients. It's a fruit type blend. And, and, and that is the flavor that you are tasting when you eat a bowl of cereal. Apparently, and someone maybe in Australia can correct me, but apparently in Australia, you can still get the single flavored Fruit Loops. Like it's still like in the ingredients, it still says raspberry, lime, cherry, uh, what was it blueberry or something? Yeah. Whatever, whatever ones it's got, orange, all, all that good stuff. The colors. <laughs> hmm. So I, I always found that pretty interesting too. That you know what you're tasting and what the what the ingredients have going on can play a huge role in your recipe development and then they can also tell you what you don't need because um, yep. sometimes you know some things some things will take it a little too far or 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 one flavoring already has it you know like a brown sugar sometimes you'll add like a brown sugar to something and you know you never know something else might already have that kind of note going on in it mm -hmm. exactly. so. I want to shout out a couple more people that popped in the chat vaping surveyor has been hanging around Wes Cochran's out there Wes I don't think I said hi to V-Dog before. What's going on there, brother? If I didn't say it before. Cochran. Yes. Hey, Wes. <laughs> yeah, the Flintstones were a way of life, of life for me, too. We must be of the same age and genre, Pippa. <laughs> because, yeah, I did watch the Flintstones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, were the oh, first, yeah they were the first couple to ever share a bed on television. Oh, really? Get out. Yeah, Fred and Wilma. First time ever on television that a, that a oh. husband and wife were in the same bed. Oh, that's right, because Lucy and Babaloo Boy were in separate twin beds. Separate bed. bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in the Lucy show. Anyway, yep. we digress. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes yeah, sometimes we go down different rabbit holes or come off the rails. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, go ahead. I say, I'm like with, with cereals, I'm finding that like some like you can get some hit and misses too with different, with different oh cereals. baby yeah it could i mean i've always been kind of hesitant on messing around with cereals a whole lot and because just because you it could get real dry and taste like nothing or you get all milk and it's just like being lactose intolerant you almost feel like, <laughs> you almost feel like you have a lactose reaction from just the milk vape because there's so much uh, cream in it so it's it's hard to find. Uh, it could be hard to find, uh, you know, a good balance. But I've learned from you guys, especially, of starting my percentages lower and then just gradually working up with them. Yeah, because I see uh, the way you guys mix, and it's like, oh yeah, you can actually get flavor by only using a half a percent of something. It's like, oh okay. Yeah. Yep. So, sometimes you'll you'll see how much it shines, and you'll be able to experience um, how much a flavor can grow over time like some of them do and some of them don't but when you stay low you get to notice how much like wow like in two weeks this this fucking one percent of this flavor really fucking shines yeah um but i have two ways in, in <coughs> cereals cereals are a really good way of explaining it um i have like two ways of mixing especially with the cereals is like something like caps fruit circles which is the new one um, a lot of people don't like it because they think it's light and it's, and it's weak and it's not as strong as the others. Um, but I find that it's way more authentic than the others. It, 
it doesn't have like a lemon pledge thing going mm-hmm. on. I was just going to say that. Yeah. And it's the, the, the reason, like the reason it being not so overpowering is why I like it the most um, because it's, it leaves, it leaves a little more room to, to add some things to. So you can ramp this up to like 8% and then use your, your, your milk base with it. And it, it's, it still, you know, stands to be the star of the show without like just being overly powering fruit circles. Cause like the other fruit circles ones, I can use them at like 0.5 in a mix. And I'm like, wow, it's, it's really there. And you know, you're not, you might not want so much of that. Um, and uh, something that someone said about uh, Capella's fruit circles is that, and it's something to note in all cereals. I mean, they didn't like it because it was uh, very dry to them. And I, I commented to them and I was like, well, when I buy a box of cereal at the grocery store, I don't really expect it to be wet when I open that bag. So <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a good thing that it's dry. Yeah, you exactly. Can, you can really play with that. Like you want you when you're when you're making a cereal and milk and that's the, you know, the only two profiles that you get. Um, you re- you want that kind of dryness that meets the milk. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so. because cause this way, yeah, like you say, you can mold it into what you want. You could throw it in with a, you know, throw it on top of a cheesecake or throw it in with a yogurt or just throw it with milk mm-hmm. you know, and other creams. And like, like with this one, I did a vanilla pudding. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice thing of like the ones that are are not too overpowering and that you can stay really like the ones that are overpowering, you can stay really low with them and kind of tuck them into like something you wouldn't expect to, you know, have it in. And then the ones that are uh, on the weaker side, you get to kind of ramp them up more so that they, you know, kind of are the the star of the whole profile, at least to me. Capella will let you do that. You know, it lets you sort of have a wide berth and you can go up, you know, four, five, six, eight percent on yeah. on some of those in a mix and it and it's pretty good. Um, how about TFA berry cereal? Have you played around with that? I, I absolutely love that stuff. Yeah, me too. I I use it super um, low for the berry notes in it, not necessarily mm-hmm. the, the cereal. Yeah, exactly. That's what people are using it for. They're kind yeah. of using it to pull out those to get that Captain Crunch kind of berry note that they're looking for. Yeah, and I mean, then it's also a very it's also a very obscure berry. It doesn't lean towards raspberry. It doesn't lean towards strawberry or blueberry. It's a kind of a you know, harvest nice, berry. <laughs> yeah, or like yeah, like harvest berry or TPA's berry mix. They'll. Mm-hmm they'll scream raspberry to me. Like I, I, mm. I don't get much else out of those other than mm-hmm. a very bright raspberry note. And I can't, I absolutely can't do any raspberries, but um, the, the berry cereal, when I think of like a berry mix, I think of just the red and blue. I think of just blueberry and strawberry. Yeah. You know, nothing, nothing too bright, nothing too dark. It's a nice middle ground of the two. Yeah, it's like outside of the one-on-one flavor, it's the only cereal one I even have is the TFA fruit circles. And we had talked about that before, about just taking that like a half a percent, throw it in with some uh, cheesecake or some yogurt and call it a day. Mm -hmm. And we have something vapable. Yeah, the cereals that I kind of use as my generic cereal flake they kind of they're kind of more of the flake style, I think. Mm -hmm. They don't have the, the lemon edge to them they don't have the fruit style to them they're kind of a sweet and flake is um pure per, perulum has a, a cereal that i use that i like it's pretty solid and um cap cereal 27 i really like yeah, that's, um i got a lot of use i just <laughs> go ahead it's it the cap cereal 27 has a lot of oh, multiple to it. it's yeah. kind of like a swiss army utility kind of texture I, yeah. I, you know, uh, additive that you can either kind of use it as an additive or kind of use it as the, the foundation of a good cereal if you yeah. want to. I think the, that's another um, good example of like overpowering flavors and flavors that do the same thing but are on the weaker side. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. it's been talked about a lot on Noted on DIY yep. or Die and stuff. Yep. Um, yep. But like 
the serial 27 is really nice because of its low low ap amount like it's like pretty similar to acetyl piercing but in like a diluted form which is really nice to be able to have in a mix where you don't want too much of that so for, for people that might be new what do you what tell them what acetyl pyrazine is and why you would use it uh so acetyl pyrazine to me is is buttery roasted like peanuts um but when you add it to grains and stuff it can really boost that texture up a bit and um give you kind of like that uh that that grainy texture towards the end of the exhale that you'd get and you know any any recipe that's calling for you know a very uh like bakery note um it can also be used to like boost like peanut butters and stuff like that um just yep. to give you more of a you know baked peanut butter note and stuff I don't tend to get, like people say, oh, I get texture. I don't really get texture. What I get is a dryness. It's more okay. than texture. What about you, Frank? Do you get like texture? Do you get like when you yeah, I get? Do. I can, but it, it may be actual dryness. But uh, yeah, Sub Bakes had, Sub Bapes had a question out in chat and he uh, asked how we use cereals and, uh, you know, and, and other stuff besides just cereals. And so, yeah, you could take the grains and even some of them, they have the, enough of a milky undertone that you can use them, you know, in in with, with a biscuit or a cookie, you know, a type of bakery note, you can use it that way. That's the way I would use it. I mean, I don't know how you guys think about it. And, yeah. and of course, putting it with the acetylpyrazine uh, at a low percentage, you can pull some of the other grainy notes out of it. Yeah, that's kind of the, the nice thing of some of the cereals too is, um, you can really pay attention to what the flavor you're using as the main, you know, profile. So say like I'm um, using Lucky Le TPA's Lucky Leprechaun for Lucky Charms, obviously, but I don't really need to add too much accents for the milk because it already has that going on. So if I were to add more milkiness, I might just drown out the whole thing. And it's just like a, getting smacked in the face with a gallon of milk. <laughs> right. Yeah. Agreed. You know, I, I see it and I can see it being used. Like if you want to do like a granola or like a yogurt parfait or um, like you want to kind of build a little bit more um, subtleties into a particular cookie that you're looking to kind of generate and create. Um, you can do that. So basically anything that you kind of want to add that back end texture and dryness, I think, you can add some of that. Um, what's your um, favorite cereal s s recipe right now, Gosmus? What do you got? It's the it's the rings. It's the it's the fruit cereal and milk. So. Is that is that available for people to take a look at? Can we uh, yeah, I'll put take a, a look at it? I'll put it on the uh, chat again. Yes. And this is one. So I've, I think. For, go ahead. This is one I've chased for a long time because I was like really sick of all of the over the top fruit circles out there and like when you know when you go to a, a vape shop and they have, <laughs> they have like 30 different fruit cereal vapes there you, you you know you test three of them and you can hands down just say like that's got tpa fruit circles in it oh that's got flavor west fruit rings in it and they're all just the same like so when caps fruit circles came out I have, I have, of course, was a bit lenient about it because I was like, oh, here we go, another fruit circles, and was pleasantly surprised. It, it had like, it was like I said, it was a lot more subtle, wasn't so in your face, and I know I said earlier in the show that like, uh, Fruit Loops are are made with one flavor, but for some reason, when I first tried this, it screamed the orange Fruit Loop to me. <laughs> and that's what I liked about it. Um, so I kept using it. And we have the uh, recipe that I've shared in there now. Yeah, I have it up now. 8% on the fruit circles, huh? It's, and it didn't overpower? Nope. It's like I said, this is one of the ones. It's cap, the... it's cap silver line. Yeah, yeah it's, it's on the it's weaker cap side. It's silver line. So 
you're, you're going to need to go anywhere between five and 8% in general. I mean, certainly there's variants, but mm-hmm. what I've, I've used about four flavors from them in that line. And um, yeah, you need to go anywhere between five and 8% in ge- like kind of as a starting point, kind of playing around and seeing it and then building around it. Um, yeah. That's what I kind of like about it is like, you have to use it so high is because like, instead of trying to find three other things to, to right. boost Cur- yep. the, the fruit yep. cereal, you know, it does a, it does a good job all on its own. So why not let that shine at a good percentage? Yeah. Um, right. And then it looks like you added the hazelnut to kind of, kind of, you know, contrast and give a little more of that texture and, you know, component to it. Is that, is that kind of what you did with the hazelnut? Yeah, it's a it's a classic addition to like oat cereals for me at least. Yep. Like it's that. Yep. It's me that. Too. It's you know like say you uh, say you're eating Fruit Loops dry, and you kind of like let like chewed them as long as you could before they, you know, disintegrated in your mouth. That flavor of the the oat cereal that you get is is pretty similar to flavor West hazelnut to me. Yeah, gives yeah. you that nice finish. At you the got end. quite a bit of cream in here. That that's you get kind of it's kind of interesting. Meringue and I think milky undertones are kind of like a nice milky. If you're looking to simplify like a recipe like this, you could probably get um, a really nice recipe with just using the fruit circles, hazelnut, little meringue, and creamy milky, milky undertones, and you'd have a pretty you know solid yeah. recipe. I think it, probably. That's, you know that's what I mean? Kind of... if, someone, if someone's looking to say, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does look like there's a lot of creams screaming at you, but that where the, the recipe did like kind of start there as just, you know, just being the creamy, milky undertones, the meringue and a little bit of hazelnut. But I yeah. wanted more more depth to everything. And my little like secret weapon... Yeah, and a lot of uh, a lot of cereal vapes is actually when you're when you're making a cereal vape with milk, and those are the only two things. Um, I like to use that TPA vanilla bean gelato. It seems to bring out some undertones of the of the cereal flavors. Yep, and helps bind bridge. The, yeah, bridge the, world, yep. the two worlds yep. together completely. It, vanilla swirl kind of does the same thing. It kind of takes the creamy stuff and the other stuff and kind of brings them together and kind of finds that that intersection for them. Yeah, and I've I found vanilla bean gelato does that as well. Yeah, I I like the vanilla bean gelato. It has a lot more uh, weight to it. Depth. Yep. Yeah. Body. I agree. Yep. The, and not vanilla, and not a, a lot. Yeah, the vanilla swirl can sometimes, like sometimes you want you know to mute things just like like what i was talking about the dryness and cereals you know sometimes you want that and you can really you can toy around with it but when a flavor is muting something you can use that to your advantage as well that can um what what intrigued me about like early recipe development when i was trying a lot of premium juice is i looked at i looked at juice as you know these are these are puzzle makers like they're they're making a puzzle for you to figure out. So if you think of your juice like that, you're you're creating a puzzle for people to figure out. So with you know the addition of all the creams that I have in there, if someone were to just try the recipe, they might have a little harder time picking out what all is going on in there. But if do, they just look wanna... at it, they would just be like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> right, right. Do we want to screen share this so pe- so people can see it? Uh, yeah, sure. Or, or just real quick. Now, Frank, I know you kind of came up with the recipe too that you published yesterday, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have that mm-hmm. one. Uh, Ready to pull up. One of the things I'm trying to do is like when I come up with the recipes, also look at a way to simplify it for people that are just getting into DIY so that they can kind of understand these are the core flavors that you probably, if you just have these flavors, you'll get a good flavor profile that's decent. And the other things just add the complexity and depth, you know, cause people like sometimes see like Addie Tooney, if anybody saw the fresh show yesterday, you had a recipe with 14 flavors in it. <laughs> and, and I think 11 on the coconut. I was just like, 
who has that many yeah. coconuts? Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, well, I'm, I'm exaggerating. I'm exaggerating, but it was like I think at least half of it was co- with different styles of coconut. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of recipes out there that you know you wouldn't want to touch with a with a ten yard stick just because of the amount of ingredients they're using. But there are a bunch out there that wisely used the amount of flavorings they did yeah um and they do and they do shine the other thing um like i i usually would leave in like a description like hey you could sub this for that or if you didn't have this you could get by with mm-hmm. just this um but i also like i have like a nine a, a nine ingredient rule i won't ever go over nine if i do not, I, a, a, not a percent rule you it's a, an ingredient rule ingredients yeah i i won't go over nine ingredients if i'm going over that i'm not using the right flavorings i think um to achieve what i am and sometimes maybe hey you have to go over that but um what this allows people and especially like new mixers because like i said when i first started mixing i didn't know about half of these flavors so this gives new mixers a chance to be like this is the real deal this is what i need to go after while you don't always need to do that you don't always need to chase down the best of the best but um sometimes it does help you know because you can find a million other uses for (coughs) for these flavors that you've been trying to achieve with other things um like (laughs) like capella's fruit circles for example you know i would not be able to to make as good as a Fruit Loops recipe in my eyes without that flavor. Um, the other ones just, yeah. they just yep. don't do it, you know? I, I, I completely agree with you. I, I agree with you. I completely agree with you. What if you wanted, now could you take that kind of milk base that you've kind of created and you wanted to make, let's say someone wanted to do, I think Raven Shadows wanted to do a cocoa, like a chocolate cocoa puff cereal. Yep. That's actually How kind would of- you, that's actually kind of what I'm doing today is um, working on a, on the cereal line that uses the same milk base. So basically it'll be, you know, whatever I use for the cereal, um, but it will still use the same Bavarian cream, yep. the meringue, the creamy milky on it. Cause that just, that also makes it easier in the future. Um, that's something I'll totally, uh, stress on to like new mixers is you know think like when you're buying flavorings and stuff and you're using them in your recipes you really want to think about the price of that that concentrate how easy it is to obtain and do you want to keep buying it yeah, um, like if it's not if it's not giving you what you want you know don't 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 keep getting it you know yeah but you know, it might it might hurt, it might hurt to just you know put it off to the side. There's there's a ton of flavors that I've put in the graveyard, and I was like, I'm never going to use this. And then sure and enough, the other th- the, the other piece of that is is like m- picking flavors that are accessible to people. Like if if you're making for yourself and it's cool and it's just you and you want to try and explore and get those unique kind of flavor, cool. But if you're kind of making something that is accessible to other people, then you know. Cap and TFA and and some of the Flavor West and some of those more accessible flavors are kind of what you want to try and find, yeah. you know, and kind of see if you can build the recipes around that. I think too. They, um, they can also they can also challenge you as a mixer too to see what you can come up with without having to go after the other things that just yeah. do it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. It checks all the boxes. Done. Like, okay, that's I'm done. Now I'm finished. But yeah. no one can find this. You like know a, this flavor. Well, know. Lori, yeah, Lori just had a question out in chat. She asked for a good sub for flavor of cream. She's like seven dollars ninety five cents for ten mils. I will not be buying it, which I understand that. And like, I think one on one cream milky undertone that would be a good sub for that. You just have to use it as a higher percentage because that's thing like flavor is being such super concentrated. You know, you're using a half to one percent when a lot of their flavors to where you know like milky undertone yeah it's half the price but you're going to use twice as much of it mm-hmm. and uh, that's yeah. that's where a lot of these uh flavorings uh 
balance out because like flavor west you have to use a higher percentage of flavor west to get the same thing if you're using real flavors or one on one yeah or fa fa is the same way flavora you tend to be lower like um fa cream fresh is very good too i think you know i don't know what the prices of them they tend to be a little more expensive a little um, bit but, but not not as high as flavor yeah i mean i i think um das Moose's recipe does a really nice job of kind of giving you a great milk uh base of of accessible flavors that you can yeah. get that are pretty reasonable Common and flavors. the other exactly, yep. yeah and the other thing is you can use those for other recipes which is really nice like the uh, gelato, you can use that. Yeah, you know, the Bavarian a, cream, you're going to use that with custards and you're going to use that with fruits and you're going to use that with yogurt, you know, cakes. So that's the nice thing about some of the 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 milk base that Das Moose made. Um, so, yeah. It uses it uses things that you will find a million other uses for. Exactly. Um, and someone yep. was saying in the chat that they're worried about, like, the price of Flavor. That's, I mean, that can go for any flavoring, no matter how much it costs, um, because it, it, you know, like it's, it's price point will usually justify your usage out of it. Um, I've whatever, you know, whatever Flavora charges for their four ounces um, is what I paid for my cream after I knew that I liked it after I bought mm -hmm. two 15 mils and I was like, okay. The, it's working. This is what I want in my recipes. I yep. went ahead and bought a yep. four ounce. I have barely put a dent in that thing. Like yeah. yep. when you're using it at one yep. percent, and, and like that's the thing. Like you, it it does. the The price point is a little bit unforgiving when you when you make that first initial buy. But once you get past that, I mean, you're going to be pretty happy that you have yeah that that one flavoring that you've been. You know, it might not be. D the other ones might not be doing what you wanted, but this one is. So, I, I think the. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry, Frank. I see we had another question out in chat about a good suggestion for a strawberry pop tart. <clears throat> I guess that's kind of cereal food. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, it is for me. <laughs> I don't know how accessible it is, but Jungle Flavors biscuit or Capella sugar cookie. And what reminds me most of a, the inside of a pop tart is jungle flavors strawberry sweet. Yep. Jungle flavors or, sweet. Or, or or juicy strawberry. Um, I'd probably add like a touch of black currant to it to give it sort of a little of that uh, jelly. You know that kind of uh, jammy taste. taste. That like jammy taste. taste to it. Yep. Like I'd add a little things. meringue to that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'd add a little meringue to that for that kind of sugar coating. Yep. Maybe, uh, what else would I add? Mm. Maybe a little golden butter. Um, try also Flavor Arts apple pie. Yeah, like it gives a, you that crust. Yep. Got that low crumble to things. I've not tried pie crust. Has anyone tried that? Is that like, does that kind of give you that that kind of uh, flaky bakery kind of note? Not really. To me, it gives me, like, so both of them, TPA's pie crust and Flavor West pie crust. Yeah, yeah. Um, TPA is a little sharper and drier. Mm -hmm. and Flavor yep. West is softer and darker tasting. But they mm. both don't really, like like cry home to like pie crust texture to me. They more just like scream all the things that are in a pie crust. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? like the flavor, the taste that you get from a pie crust without the texture is what they remind me of. Yeah. So you need to add something that's going to give you that texture. That's interesting. Yeah. So biscuit, oh, biscuit, cookie could do that for you. Yeah. Flavor yeah. arts, flavor arts cookie is a good one to use at low, low percentages. It's got a lot of grittiness to it. Yeah. Um, butter is another thing um, that, like, if you don't overuse it, it can be a freaking awesome little hidden gem in a lot of your bakery recipes. Um, yep, and I agreed. have all of them. TPAs, butter. If you go too high with that, it'll taste like fucking movie popcorn. Um, Caps, golden butter is, like, 
the margarine version of butter to me. And it's got kind of like a waxy, <laughs> waxy taste to it. So keep that one in mind. And then if you want true, true butter, I'm not too sure w where you'd want it or need it. But if you do, <laughs> Flavor Arts Butter from Eseg Express is the is the best. Huh, I've never tried that. I'm gonna have to find that. I've been using Golden Butter for like any time I want to add butter to something. Yeah, I stay, use the Caps Golden Butter. Stay super low. Even um, butter is a nice thing to use in cereal vapes when you're trying to make a cereal bar, like those little. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gooey, gooey bars. Yeah, so if you use like Capella's marshmallow yeah. at three percent, and then your choice of butter, and then the cereal, you pretty much have like those little cereal bars. Cereal bars. Oh, that's a great idea. Is is it like a? It's like kind of like the. Is it like a Rice Krispie bar though? Well, it I mean, it depends on the cereal it's made out of. What the cereal you're using? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pippa has a good Pippa has a good recommendation. She's saying FA croissant um, kind of gives you that flaky crust if you're looking for that, and the new VT croissant also has it. So that's good to know. Thanks, Pippa. I have yeah. I have actually one Wonder Flavors <clears throat> croissant maybe. Yeah, I think I got it's one. Wonder Flavors actually. I haven't you got Wonder it Flavors yet. croissant as well. <laughs> yeah, I haven't it, messed around with it. It's on my list. It it cries donut to me. Uh, that's not what I wanted. That's no, no, alley. don't tell me that. But not don't tell me that. Not in a bad way, because I mean, there's a yeah. there's a Hannaford's, the grocery store near us. They make crodos, which is a oh yeah crossed with a donut, and they're donut. so good. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. Like a cronut. Yeah, that could be good. Yeah, and they don't Frank, like you... they don't like taste like a donut, like the 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 deep fried pastry kind of donuts or the cake donuts. They don't. They don't taste like that. They're like a very light, flaky donut. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So it's not loaded with Zapola. No, no, not at all. Yeah. No, no spices. I, I can't stand Zapola. I can't. I can't do it. I actually cake. loved it. I know you do. Well, you're a donut dude. Like I'm you a are donut the donut man. dude, man. I just I can't take Zapola. I, I make donut recipes left and right. I know uh, you do. I just. Uh, because I can't eat sweets much. So you might as well vape them. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. vape the hell out of sweets. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Frank, did you want to put yes. up your recipe and kind of talk a little bit about it? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually mixing it right now. I looked at the time on the good. Oh, go oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm Dr. sorry. Today, I like the fat boy flavors. <laughs> yeah, the who? Food. Doc would say I like the fat boy flavors. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um. So, have, do you do you find that like adding um, like hazelnut or, or almond or marzipan kind of adds like a malted note to milk? Have you found that? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it gives like yeah, like the nuttiness and like like a little bit of. I know milk doesn't have texture really in, in the in like the nutty sense, but. Um, you know, if you had yeah. cereal going on in it, that's what it reminds me of. It's like all the, mm -hmm. all the slight grains that would be floating around. Yeah, kind of in the bottom of the, the milk bottle. Have yeah. you tried TFA Lucky Leprechaun? Yeah, that's uh, that's like one of the major components to my unlucky recipe. <laughs> right, here's mine. Here's what I came up with. Cool. Pretty, pretty simple, straightforward. Let's say I'm nervous about playing with 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 cereal, so this was something I was just you know actually uh, watching Fresh's uh, Saturday show. I was uh, messing around with this, and when um when Lifer went live uh, doing his uh, vape break, you know his impromptu vape break yesterday. Uh, so this is what I was doing while I was watching them. And basically, you know, I wanted the cookie in there, give it a little bit more of a more of a bait, more of a, I guess like a grainy note. I figured, you know, add a little bit more substance to it. You know, the meringue, the sweet cream, and the pudding to give it like the, the sweetness, and you know, and some milky undertones because I don't have the PG milky undertone yet. That should be coming this week from one on one. And then the speckle flake cereal has a creamy back note in it to go with the frosted flakes. 
you know, I, I think I told you, Mary, about that it was a uh, like a cornflake, but I was um, I was I was close. It's a uh, like a Tony the Tiger, like a frosted flake. Cool. All right. Yeah, I love uh, I love frosted flakes. Yeah. So that's basically what I came up with. I just left a max VG. I'm I may throw some PG in it, and when the next time I mix it, I just throw a little fifteen mil sample together just to just to play with it. I vaped a bunch of it last night while I was watching TV and. Mm-hmm. I'm watching uh, you and the ladies on Nikki's show. That was that was a good time last night. It looks like you guys had a lot of fun. Yeah, we did. It was a good show. It was it was enjoyable. That's a uh, that's kind of something I'd like to say about cereals is there's a good this is a good time to get into vaping them, I guess, if you're interested because you have when you go to the grocery store, you have a million different ideas right there in that one aisle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and like, you do. Yeah. Like I, in my in my rings recipe, like I used marshmallow, um, not to necessarily have marshmallows in there. It just kind of thickens and sweetens things up, as we all know. But if you go to the grocery store, they do sell Fruit Loops with marshmallows in them now, so you can make that a recipe now too. You can make yeah, yeah. You, there's Frosted Flakes with the Lucky Charms marshmallows in them now, so there's like you know. The ideas are endless, and who's to yeah. you know who's to tell you that it, it doesn't taste like that? You know what I'm saying, or like it, it's not what it, it was you were going for? Because there's just so many, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's just so many cereals out there. <laughs> the other thing, the other thing too is like I see a lot of the fruit ring type of cereals have kind of like um, they've used uh, cap lemon meringue pie. Yeah, to um, boost that lemon a bit. To, to generate that lemon with a little jungle flavors biscuit, strawberry, and a little effie lemon. And yeah. Then they add their whatever they're using for your milk. And you have a really solid tasting sort of fruity cereal base because the predominant flavor, I guess, is lemon. You know, if you think about it. Yeah, it's, some of the- it's the one that, that you pick up the most. Yes, in- exactly. In- yeah, um, exactly. But that's kind of like... I'll say I, I don't really have many pet peeves in mixing, but I guess if I do, one of them is adding, like I know it will make the the recipe more interesting and probably give different characteristics to it, but I don't understand like the addition of like crunch berries in a Fruit Loops recipe when none of those crunch berries or the berries that are found in crunch berries are in Fruit Loops. So yeah, might, right. You know, they might boost some things and it might, you know, the recipe's probably still good. I, I, you know, it, it's nothing against anyone for doing that, but I always found it weird. And that, that, that's another reason why I like using Caps Fruit Circles is because it doesn't need any help from a different cereal that is yeah. something else. Yeah, it's almost like cross. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, putting the, uh, you know, the fruit circles and the crunch berries together. It's like you already have fruit. You don't really necessarily need to put yeah. those two in the same recipe. Yeah. It's it's like the brighter fruits are the loop cereals. Mm-hmm. And then crunch berries is more of a savory. It's not as bright. Yeah. Right. Well you don't yeah, you you don't pick up those high notes as much, right? Yeah. Yeah. The the um the cereal I did was more of the graham cracker, you know, golden graham kind of flavor cereal. Um, and that's what I came up with. And I'm going to put that in uh, chat because um, it's kind of hard for me. I'm on my phone here yeah, in the old yeah. hotel without power. I'm going to pop that up in the in chat. So if anybody wants to pick that up, they can take a look at that. Yeah. So we had a late um, arrival there. Uh, uh, Anthony just showed up. He's like, can you can go back and start the show over? It's like, I would, but there's other people coming in behind me doing their shows. So we'll, we're going to probably go about another 15 minutes and then we're going to be out of here. So, uh, but hell, yeah. I, could, I could go all day doing this stuff, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love talking to, to, to I just, I just, don't, I just, I just don't want to get divorced to me if I can you know, hang around here for all afternoon. <laughs> I already do enough of it. and I, already yeah. get, you know, I get the stink eye enough as it is. <laughs> well, uh, I Place guess I can backwards. So we know, we know what time that is. <laughs> I guess I can put the yeah, I went ahead and mixed her up. Chewy chocolate granola bar in the chat too. Yeah, definitely. That's a cereal one. Oh, Tommy made it next, just in time. That's the one you're working on. 
Yeah. Is it chocolate? Uh, did you figure out how to knock down that peanut butter chase? Yep. Yep. And just don't use flavor <laughs> hazelnut or any acetylpyrazine or anything that just will really. Burn. Yeah. Yeah, because it just kind of pushes that right up. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like when I when I'm thinking of a a cheap granola bar, it's like really just the like you're lucky if you get a a good majority of oats in there, but it's mostly just the puffed rice and yep. chocolate. <laughs> totally. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> That might be good, a good one for a Raven Shadow. She may dig that one. So my recipe is kind of a um, the golden graham kind of genre. So the core of this was the graham cracker clear um, and the sugar cookie, tap mm -hmm. sugar cookie kind of creating the, along with a, the, a perulum per, has a vanilla nut brittle. So that kind of creates the crunchy cereal base. Mm -hmm. And then um, for a little sweetness and, and uh, added kind of creaminess, I used butterscotch cream pie. And then for my milk, I just use creamy milky undertones, meringue, and then milk and honey by Favora to kind of add that creamy honey bottom of the bowl kind of graham cracker flavor. That's kind of what I was going after. And we'll see. I mean, I, it, after uh, one day, it was pretty good. I, I actually liked it. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. What I find sometimes with certain perium flavors and some of the flavor, the wonder flavors is their flavors fade after time so when you you know on a shake and vape day three you know you're really happy you hit you think you hit your profile and you come back to it like seven eight nine ten two weeks later and you're like whoa wait a minute what happened to those those, yeah, totally those higher notes that i was getting yeah so yeah. we'll see what happens yeah one on one actually has a graham cereal do like, they yeah they do a, a lot of stuff grapes, like that i think it is uh I, that's another one i have that i've never opened Yeah, I saw there's another company that makes a like holy treats or something like that. And it's just pretty much like a one shot of golden grams, but you can still use it in your Oh cool. Well think okay. speaking of one shots, uh, did you guys see that uh Flavor came out with their new line of one shots? Their wizard yep. lines right now? Oh god, they look good. Yep. That canola yeah. looks like that's going to be something yep. straight up. Yep. And it's like 8% suggested mix. And I talked to Jen Jarvis about it. And she said, depending on where your sensitivity is, you can either go either way. That's, you don't have to lock in at that 8% or, you know, or the suggested ones. You can either come down a little if you're oversensitive or bump them up a little bit if you're a little muted. So that's that. I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to grabbing them. Um, I got a question in the chat from Subvapes. Mm -hmm. um, I do all of my flavor or recipe development on my two Hadley's. Oh, and I got a free Frechet yesterday. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what is that? Wait, what was that? What uh, is that? My, a Frechet? A Sigeli oh, Frechet. Yeah, Frechet. Frechet. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, my, my friend was like, it's been sitting in my shop forever. I don't want it. Was, so he gave it to me. Cool. But, cool. So I, all right. For my RDAs, uh, I do all my recipe development on two Hadley's. Um, this speeds up and a wasp, too, because I know a lot of people have wasps. Um, yep. But it speeds up recipe development for me. Um, yep. And it also, like, while I'm vaping something and trying to understand how it's aging more because I a lot of my recipes are you know made to be just good right off the shake but they will develop and become better over time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that gives me the speed up in that like I, I get to I get to work on something I get to vape on something the way I like to vape all the time and then once I've found that something is good I'll put it through other tests because I know people that buy my juice aren't necessarily always using these they're using like a goon or a sub tank or something like that so once i think it's good i'll put it through like three different tests i do like a a 60 mil 60 watt test um so I'll just vape, it, <laughs> vape a whole 60 mil at 60 watts on the goon and to see what you know what other people might experience when they try it on their device um but to yeah. get the get to get a true reference of what i'm doing i always use the hadley's they're just king in flavor 
to me. Yeah, the, the only thing about the Hadley, I don't, I'd be curious to know if you found this, that some of the darker, richer notes don't really come out in the Hadley, but I find them, they, I find that they come out, you know, like in a goon or in a drop or in a, you know, some of the, the uh, other RDAs. Yeah, um, like, it does tend to bring out like, uh, sharp, like sharper notes out more and, and like the top mm -hmm. notes of things. Yep, um, yep, they, absolutely. They just scream out a bit more. So yeah, I agree. Out with the lemonade. Yeah, exactly. That's what happened for you probably, Alfredo, with yeah. your boysenberry. What was it? Your lemonade Boys, and what was it? Boysenberry lemonade. Boysenberry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's tough. Day five and it's even better. Yeah, that's the thing like with this yeah. with this recipe I did today you know it right off the shake this is like every, you can taste almost everything you mm -hmm. know, obviously it's gonna be a little forward with the vanilla pudding but then you're getting the cereal right there even at three percent and I think those yeah. two play together uh, very well yeah I, yeah I, I may have to mix that up too I I have on this the honey circle cereal I haven't played with that yet so I want to try these these two that you made. That's I have all the flavors of the two recipes. That oh, you know what? I don't have breakfast. I don't. Yes, I, no, I do. I, I do have I breakfast encourage. cereal. I do have it. I encourage all the mixers out there to pick up Honey Circles cereal. It's it's yeah. definitely the most yeah. underrated cereal out there. And I, yeah, I agree with you. I know a, a lot of people will agree and disagree, um, but if all the honeys out there aren't doing what you want them to do because we know they won't um mm -hmm. that can be a pretty forgiving <laughs> honey note at just 0.5 percent yeah. in a recipe yeah. it has a nice like yeah. yep has a nice cheap honey taste like it's yeah. more towards golden syrup or something i guess yeah i'd be the the vape train flavors that are coming out there are so many that i can't wait to try um you know, and Pippa had just noted that you can use them kind of at lower percentages. They were pretty reasonable over at uh, Bull City. I was yeah. able to pick up some. And um, I think I picked up that golden syrup. So I'm kind of really excited to try that. Yeah. Um, I've been kind of looking at that. That's something I forgot to add about my recipe. Um, like using a, using a flavor ramped up, I call it like a ramped up standalone. Um, so you have like standalone recipes and when you do that, it kind of lets you see how much those other strong concentrates that you're only going to use at one and 2% or something or lower, you know, mm -hmm. it kind of lets you see how much they're going to either overpower or stand up to a, a weak flavor that you're using. So, so high, um, it lets you, it lets mm -hmm. you kind of see where, where, it, where it's going a little bit more. It's just something I like about where it plays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. they kind of have like room to be that strong concentrate that they are without like cloying yep. anything, you know? Yeah. Now the honey circle cereal, that's the TPA one. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I jumped on that. The, as soon as they released that flavor, I, I ordered it right away. And of course mixed it up at like 3%. And I was like, Ooh, a little high. Oh, <laughs> that's, uh, hello. That's like that's dry it's like dried sand with a hint of a oh, wow. honey <laughs> so definitely that, use it a lot lower but that's kind of typical tpa percentages you know like that's not unusual i like no, that's yeah. kind of where i would go too it's so. it's nice it's nice and surprising from them um, yeah, yeah. Thing with like some their uh, half a percent some stuff is 10 percent. you pick your you pick your poison yeah. <laughs> yeah. same thing with their their sweet cereal flakes Mm -hmm. that one that one is like another one that like you don't really need to go overboard for like i like to use this with capella's cereal 27 uh -huh. so yep. you use, you use the cereal 27 for the grain the texture and the actual flake cereal and just like a drop like 0.25 to 0.5 percent of this for the frosted part of the yeah. frosted flakes because that's what it that's what it tastes like to me it's like if you could just get a bag of the the frosted coating that's on the frosted flakes that's that's what it tastes like and it does have a little bit of flaky texture or you know cornflake kind of taste there in the very background but it's mostly covered up by like 
in your face frosted frosted cereal. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, we have a vape train coming out this week. Uh, Bull City flavors, you can get them over there. Uh, how many flavors did they? Because I know Bull City had. I mean, uh, vape train in Australia has how many flavors? I know Pippa could probably answer that because I know she's been going through like crazy with them. You know, flavor testing. Yeah, like coming out with like, some really nice recipes too, and some yeah. really nice recipes. That coffee, coffee Collins, I think it is. I got I that's like um, I am that one. I'm a coffee freak. So yeah. yeah. Because over at Bull City, I think they've only, I think they have what twenty something of them right now to start with. Mm. If I read right. Yeah, not too many. Two hundred four. Wow. Two hundred four, Frank. So Holy so smokes! Over here, we're just scratching the surface. Flavors. Oh my god! Yeah, run, yeah, yeah. But you can get we're a lot. We're like of the them sample at, box. I mean, you can get a lot of them at <laughs> Chefs though, and have them brought over from the UK. And it's only it may take you two weeks to get them, but. It's only like five, six dollars shipping. It's no different than what you're paying over here. Oh, that's really good to know. I've heard that they had a cheap flat rate shipping, but I didn't realize it was that inexpensive. Yeah, it's like six bucks. You know, it's not, that's great. You, oh wow. You, you purchase enough of it and you know make a one bulk order, you're, you're yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> Pippa Pippa has hundred of them. <laughs> oh my god. That's outrageous. Yeah, it's awesome now. I mean, that we're getting more, you know, even more flavors over here to play with stuff from other countries, see how they do it. Yeah. It's overwhelming, actually. I find it kind of overwhelming, man. Yeah. You know, it's just like, like it's I crazy. think in the course of an hour, you know, the other day, I had like three flash shale, flash sales all hit me at once. Yeah, like, okay, right. Who am I going to buy from and who am I going to have to pass up on because I didn't have the money to buy from all three. And I on one to 35 percent off and the picked one up on one that was a great deal man yeah i, th- I only yeah. spent like 17 bucks i got like four flavors and you know yeah. they're gonna throw some in just they're gonna throw a 30 mil something in for nothing anyway that's yeah. normally what yeah. they do there so they basically got five flavors for 17 bucks yeah <clears throat> and i'll probably get that by next weekend hopefully cool all right well it's quarter after so let's take this around the room because after we everyone when we leave head on over to mix life they uh, they're on episode 48 go check them out they're doing it says rock flag so i'm not quite sure what they got going on over there but <laughs> go, check, go check that out after uh, we're done here yeah sounds head promising. on over there <laughs> yeah sounds like it could be good all right moose. So, yeah go, oh, go ahead go ahead man. no go ahead go ahead moose yeah, yeah. where can we find you moose um, you can find me, well, I'm on hiatus right now because I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my ATF account is all locked and down. So don't go looking for me there. Um, but the recipes that I talked about today are on ELR under the same ATF name, Liquid Antlers. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I came to the DIY community to do. I just want people to vape good juice and help point people in the right direction and do this fun thing with a bunch of like-minded people. So thank you guys for that opportunity. You all, you know, make the community what it is, what you bring to the table, what you want to do, how you see, how you see fit is what makes this whole thing unique. And it's a, I will, I'll always say it's not about all the like techniques or the flavorings or the mods or the, juices you have it's about you know the ones that you like and the right ones that work for you you know mm-hmm. that's what, it, that's right what it, absolutely 100 percent. right on as alfredo said right on i also <laughs> say into the mixers think less and mix more <laughs> yeah that's how you get in blocks and i've done that too where it, it made i lost i lost the enjoyment and for a while there because it seemed like everything I was making was the same shit and I couldn't come up with anything. I couldn't find, couldn't get outside the box and I just stepped away from it for a little bit. And I started playing with the YouTube and getting, you know, commercial juices in to review. And now I'm like right back in that rabbit hole again and I'm loving it. Especially with yeah. starting. Yeah. Yeah. Because for the longest time I didn't vape anything that I didn't mix. Mm-hmm. I say for a good six months, I everything I did was DIY, and that was it. 
Yeah, there's a whole big drawer of premium juice right at my feet that I haven't touched. <laughs> my friend that owns the shop just gave it to me, and he's like, you might want it. <laughs> nope, <laughs> I haven't touched any of it. There's not even really anything in there that I want to, like, pick apart to explore. It's not None of them sound really all that intriguing to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I get it, bro. You got a strawberry banana. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopee. Well, Fredo, thanks again for coming in and being the executive producer. We almost lost Alfredo and Mary Beth today because Alfredo oh. went down 15 minutes before showtime. He, he blipped from the screen. <laughs> he goes, yeah, I, I just I just went down. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> this, uh, definitely, this definitely would have been a shit show. Oh, yeah. No, it would I, not have. <laughs> Don't say that. I appreciate having me on, Frank. Uh, I want to give a few shout outs to Dory Le- e- Liquid. Uh, West End, uh, West End Liquids also, and I hang out at the vape shack.org. And like I say every week, it's my second home, and that's all I got for today. It's been a pleasure, Dust Moose. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, guys. I'd like to give a shout out yeah, to we- Just Shindo, Just Shindo, nobody else, Just Shindo, Just Shindo. <laughs> yeah, see, I got the dark background. I kind of blend in like Shindo right now. He's, he's <laughs> a little too bright. I'd have to wear black. You need, black. You need that one spotlight on you to, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find me on um, ELR under MechModRN and Instagram under MechModRN. Um, I've got a couple of recipes up there. Um, I'm in the Vape Shack. Um, I recommend if you're trying to learn about DIY, there are some really good communities out there. Um, Jen Jarvis has some good information out there. Pippa at DIY Down Under. You can find her Facebook group. DIY um, or you die. Can follow her. <laughs> yep. And DIY, DIY or Die, Wayne and Fresh03 um, has his YouTube channel. And, and they're all great. And I've learned from all of them. And it's fantastic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll say that's so, where you can find me a lot is in uh is in DR, DIY or dies the the mixing collective Discord. on Facebook and then the Discord, yeah. yeah. But in the mixing collective, I'm usually you know pretty active. Yeah. When I'm scrolling in my feed, uh, there's a question I have to answer. <laughs> 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 so it, it's so then- I, I like helping people out and stuff, and you know bringing more ideas to the table and stuff. So yeah, if you ever yeah. got a question, you can probably find me in there. Yeah, yep. exactly. All right, gang. Let's see. All right. We got a, I want to give a shout out as well to Omegadon e liquid. Get you some fat Tony, or if you're willing to go oh, challenge, fat get Tony some so good. Phantom ravioli. I see it through there. Uh, this one, get you some this one. All them, you can get the uh, you use coupon code pussy, save you 10%. All nice and tight. Here's one I did a review on. Well, I've, I filmed it today. I still got to edit it down. Fyefruit.com. This one, it's uh, this one here is their Project X. It's a honeydew, watermelon, and blackberry. I thought it was going to suck. I'll be straight up honest with you. I thought this was not going to be down. You know, not going to be in my profile. I thought it was going to be lousy, and I can't stop vaping it. It actually turned out to be pretty good. Yeah, next week. I'll Who is it? What is it? It's called fyefruit.com. It's a five huh. fruit. This is their, uh, their project X, they call it. It's a watermelon honeydew blackberry. Huh. I picked Sound this up bad. back in November at the Vapors Carnival, 120 mils of it for like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks. They have it on their site for $28, and it's really good. I was, I was really surprised. I guess after it sat for a couple of months, it uh, it, it, it mellowed out. So I remember first tasting, and all I tasted was um, was sweetener, but it it chilled out nicely. Cool. Yeah, I was like, check out Mix Life going on now. I think you had what DIY Mixers Crew after that. You have yep. oh, what's the other one with Concrete River and Steam Room and all them guys? What's one? Or e, no, not E Juice University. They're on a little bit later. When you e have- Juice Makers. Yeah, is it e juice like, makers maybe like that yeah something like that yeah, yeah. and then you have also mix and vixens tonight 6 p.m eastern 
Oh, yeah. So, and you have so, church tomorrow night, also known as Noted on DIY or Die. Yes. But I like to call it church. You have, you have, <laughs> noted, you have noted on DIY or Die tomorrow night and plus fresh from it's the really- kitchen tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Fresh, fresh Brian. And I, I didn't see what the thumbnail was, what they got going on tomorrow, but it'll, it'll definitely gotcha. be something good. Lots of good information out there. If you want it, it's there's there's ton, and the DIY community shares it willingly, which is fantastic. Yes. So yeah. much love, everybody. Much love. Thank, thank you, Mary. Hopefully, uh, the power gets back yeah. on uh, soon. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, hopefully sooner <laughs> for you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Every, yeah, everyone out there, you know, be good to each other. Remember, you, you doing DIY, you can control your vape. You don't have to worry about, you know, being at the um, being at the mercy of the local vape shop or the postman, you can uh, buy some concentrates and get some BG and some nicotine and always have stuff on hand. Uh, you know, Pippa says she's on Wednesday night, U S time. Yeah, definitely. I can't forget about Pippa. She's been awesome. She's been a supporter of my channel from day one. She has. We're Absolutely. Gonna get, we're going to have to make get her, her on her, here. Yeah. We have to wake her up a little early one day and have her come on. Yeah. Absolutely. She's, already, she's already up super early, way earlier than I get up. But. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a fun show. Yeah, I would enjoy that actually. That'd oh, be yeah. great. We'll, All right. We'll get her on. Yeah, let's get out of here because we're cutting into uh, other people's time. So have a good one, everybody. We'll see you all next week. Until then, just keep on mixing. Peace out. <laughs> all right. You stopping the stream? I got to stop it on this end. What the fuck am I doing here? Okay. Too many windows open at once. We're out. Uh, about to be. Oh, yeah, I can do it right here. I gotta go back to the control room screen. I think we're still here. They can still see us. I'm dancing. <laughs> yes. You're doing my fault. You guys stuck around. <laughs> Moose stuff for money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we out? We're out. We're yeah. Out. Trying, trying. <laughs> it might, it might a, this thing we is running. Want to slow. leave, but we just it's, can't. It's running slow right now. What are you doing? No. There we go. Stop streaming. <laughs> okay. Yes, I want to stop. I'm not even.